Hey, it's Fitz, and just before we get to the Rock Radio podcast, I wanted to tell you about Legacy Casts. Legacy Cast is basically a private podcast for your family, and you record these so that you can pass down all of the stories and all of the interesting information, basically your legacy for years to come, and we can do both audio and video, your choice. You come to our studio and either one of us can ask the questions or you can ask the questions yourself, bring in your parents, bring in your grandparents, bring in your uncles, your aunts, your good friends, whatever. It's called a Legacy Cast. I invite you to check it out at yourlegacycast.com or rockvox.com. And now, on with the podcast. Round, 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 go the records. Today's Soft Rock, Warm 101.3. I'm Kevin Gillen. I have some not so... I'm Kevin Gillen. Quite frankly, I'm lucky to be alive today. Here's what happened. I'm Kevin Gillen, and every once in a while, I give out a pop quiz. It's a piece of American pop culture and the company car. The Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. It's another episode of the Rock Radio Podcast, and who do I have in the studio? Gilly! Who do you have? Oh, Kevin Gillen, yeah. Gillen, long time, warm 101.3 afternoon jock. Yes, I was. And uh, one of the funniest and nicest guys I've ever met working in the biz. Really? Yeah, man. You you pushed my kids on a on a a chair with wheels down the hallway. Oh, I did do that. While yeah, I was doing I traffic. That I was remember. the best. Yeah. When yeah. I had to bring them the Rugrats. Now, that compliment isn't on a loop you play for all these people, is it? I don't think so. No? Maybe not exactly in those words. <laughs> As long as you mix it up. That's yeah, what's, it's, that's what's yeah exactly. Um, so, well, I'm glad to have you here. Finally, we've been talking about it for a while now to get you to come down and, and rap with me. Yeah, this is the first broadcast appointment I've actually had since March, <laughs> since I left the radio station. Wow, it's, that's when you left was March? March, yeah, March 5th, I think. Wow. Yeah, and it's almost, what, six months now? Something yeah, like I mean, I just passed, I, I left in at the end of July, of 2020 so it's been just over a year for me now yeah. since i left and look i even brought one of these <laughs> <laughs> but i found out i didn't need them i don't know i this would be too weird this would be matrix like right if we had two two windscreens on one microphone i've never met a guy who walks around <laughs> keeps a microphone windscreen in his pocket but... well four months into the pandemic yeah we were all given these by the chief engineer and it was like we don't want to have you spread any of your cooties you know, throughout the, throughout the company. And it would have been nice a little closer to the beginning of March, 2020, but I don't remember. Oh yeah. Now I do remember that they gave us those. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. Nice little gift from the company. <laughs> six bucks. The best Is that six what they bucks were? there. Holy maybe, heck. maybe 10. Those look like their quality. Yeah. Yeah. So how long were you in radio all told from day one to day and all told to see it was just over 30 years at warm i was at wvor and whham for a combined i think seven years before that and then i was in auburn new york for another seven or eight i lost count is that where you started off in auburn started in auburn yep got out of college looking for a job got a job there um basically went to college thinking i was either going to do sports play-by-play yeah or be a radio disc jockey and my reasoning at the time was there's going to be more radio disc jockey jobs than there's going to be sports announcer type jobs and now i think it's about the opposite (laughs) i think there's more teams and more sports these days yeah yeah um so but it it was a fun career i always told people i uh you know really be working for a living right you know no heavy lifting right um, exactly. What's the worst thing that could happen? Your little dead air, a little, uh, mispronounce a name. Right. You know, right. Had to always be careful with Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Oh, gee. I had to, and, and believe me, it was all, you had to think about it beforehand just to say it, just to enunciate all the words. Um, so that was, you know, that never happened the wrong way. Right. Which right. Was, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> Would have hated to say Michael Luther King yeah, Jr. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Um, so yeah, I mean, not not a lot ever went wrong, and uh, it was it was a fun way to earn a living. What was it when you when you first started out compared to when you finished up your career? 
What's one thing that changed drastically that you wish hadn't? I mean, besides the entire industry. Uh, besides, <laughs> besides, besides that. that. Uh, that's a good question. I think, um, yeah, probably just there were, there were too many experts on the way things should be done. Maybe mm. toward the end of my career than there was at the beginning where it seemed to be a little more, a little looser. Um, you know, the technology certainly improved, improved, uh, going from old analog tapes and stuff to digital. Um, I guess that was better. <laughs> you know, it made editing easier, as you probably know. Yep. Um, but other than that, I mean, we just, uh, as you probably know, there's a lot of guys that have been in Rochester Radio or had been in Rochester Radio for a long, long, long time. Yeah. And we always kind of adapted to the technology. We used to play records, believe it or not. And we went to carts, and we went to CDs, and then just pretty much all hard drive. The pewter. Yeah. And in getting out of radio, it was the one thing that I was fearful that um, I wouldn't be satisfied in trying to think of creative angles to things and stuff like that. My little spin on the world. Yeah. Um, and now it's just my wife and son that gets the benefit of having <laughs> <laughs> all that They're nonsense. so thankful, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Do you, I, are you and Sean still uh, walking? We're still walking. Yeah, I think we're up to... Getting close to 1,250 straight days. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I started walking, too. I started walking my dog every day. Yeah. You know, about two, three miles. You guys walk, though. You walk like five miles a day or, or more about, than that? Uh, average a little over four. Yeah. Um, you know, in the winter, we'll go around the block a couple times, get a mile in. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we'll go to the malls. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. My son is autistic, uh, high-functioning. And uh, as is my son. And that was, uh, you know, always a good thing in my wife and I opinion that, Hey, if we get him committed to doing something like this every single day, no matter what, yeah, that it was good for him. And it's, it's proved to help with anxiety and depression and just a better, better man of you know, yeah. life. Do you guys walk. get to have like nice, uh, long talks on the walks or do you? Yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah. Um, or do you bring the AirPods and just... Yeah, we listen to our own thing sometimes. Um, you listen to old old tapes of, of your radio show? No, <laughs> I've, I've never done that. Do you have... I'm sure you have those, though. You have, like, back in the day. I, w I should have told you to bring some. You know, some, some of your... Some bits that you did a long time ago that you're kind of proud of and that you kind of... You know, you miss doing that. I'm sure you did a lot of that earlier on, right? Yeah, yeah. And I know I have old reel-to-reel -reel tapes in yeah. my house. Yeah. And then a number of years ago when um, radio did away with the reel-to-reel -reel machines, they were basically at the station saying, hey, anybody want one of these things? And it was an old battle axe of a machine, a Marantz reel-to-reel deck. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll take one. So that's in my garage, never touched. Um, same with an old DAT machine, which was supposed to be the wave of the future. You still have a DAT? I still have a DAT Does machine. Does it work? I think so. I need to borrow that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll be right back. So, yeah, go get it. I'll wait. <laughs> you remember uh, like two years ago when suddenly all those tapes and there was two DAT machines that were out in the, the jock lounge area. Okay. They were sitting there and I took them both and tested them out and neither one of them worked. So I brought them back. Okay, um, but I have a bunch of old dad tapes that I've been wanting to try to to play, and I was looking. I'm like, should I buy a dad from eBay? And I'm like, that's yeah, like 150 bucks, and I don't really know if it's going to work. I will check to see if it works. Yeah, um, yeah, that so. would be very cool. Like a lot of uh, that would embarrassing be cool. stuff. Dad would be cool. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy. So you know, back when you when you first started, what year did you start? Uh, radio. Let's see. I graduated from college in December of 78. And I think I pretty much was working January of 79. I got a job. That's cool. So you uh, got right in. Right in in Auburn. I worked for about six or seven years there. And I was lucky enough to do both announcing on the air, do the morning show, and also do some play by play. Uh, Auburn at the time, I think they still do, had a class A baseball team. Mm hmm. And I remember I had, I had two or three days where I would get up in the morning, do the morning show. I would walk to work. I live close to work, walk to work, do the morning show, come home for a break, 
Um, I do some baseball stats to get up to date for the game that night. I lived across from the post office. So I go across the street from the post office, pick up the station's mail, take it back to the station, <laughs> go in and do commercial production until two or three in the afternoon, come home, finish up my baseball stats. Uh, my color man would pick me up and we'd drive down to Elmira from Auburn, set up the equipment, do the game, break down the equipment, go back home to Auburn. And then I'd have to get up the next morning. I think there were back to back days a couple times where I did all that in the course of 48 hours, <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. Right? It was fun. It was yeah. that thing where you're like, this is great. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was great. And, uh, you know, I think it still is for certain people in certain jobs, yeah. but it's just, um, it was time. You said you talked to my buddy, Dave Kane, right? I did. Kano was in, in that very seat. And he probably also said it, it was, you know, <laughs> probably time to pull the plug. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Most definitely. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of a, a universal understanding right now in, in the industry. I think there's a lot of people who have been, see, I was only, I was only in Rochester radio, really only in radio for about just under 10 years. Okay. Um, because I was a video guy and ended up in radio in Rochester because there were no more video jobs and I happened to know the boss. Right. I was like, Hey, can I have a job? And it, it ended up turning into a full-time job. But, um, a lot of people have left or have been forced out in just the last few years. And the industry is changing so much that it's hard to know what it's even going to look like Yeah, five years from now. Yeah. I still see hope, though, because I still see um, younger kids that are in college that still want to go on radio, which right. I think is a pretty good thing. And they have that passion that you can remember. Right back when you were in school. But on the other hand, we got these older guys, myself and Dave and other people who have, you know, been in the business for such a long time. And then you get close to retirement age, you get a little tired of it. The industry is changing. Whereas young kids come in and they pretty much say, okay, this is the way commercial radio works. And then they go ahead and do their job. Right. But they don't know any other, any right, different. Right. Right. But, us, but you don't understand what it used to be like, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I remember a specific time where I may have played a song that wasn't in the log, and uh, Hellfire and Brimstone came down upon hotline? me. Hotline? Did you get Hotline? Did not get Hotline because he was at he was there. <laughs> oh, okay. So <laughs> I got the door. Yeah. Um, I almost got in trouble once for playing Ghostbusters on Halloween. Really? Yeah, on Halloween. That's such a stretch. I don't even get um, the context. On it warm one one foot. Go <laughs> But yeah, I was told uh, next time this happens, if it ever happens again, we need to clear this ahead of time. Same with Michael Jackson's Thriller. So, right. So, but yeah. now, harken back to the early days. How strict was it when you were a disc jockey in the morning show? And let's say someone famous died, a famous rock star died. I think has happened over the years, once or twice. Once or twice. Um, you could just you could just play that song. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, without really any retribution, as long as it wasn't some obscure B-side with a lot of F-bombs in it. Right, right. Yeah, I think so. And, and also, it's funny you bring that up, because we used to have the UPI and the AP machines, mm -hmm. these big tickers, uh, where we'd exclusively get all of our information. And I remember when Michael Jackson died, my general manager at the time saw it on some website, some sort of obscure website, that's when he came into me and kind of paved the way for, you know, keeping your ear out for things. And if it becomes official, let's get on it kind of a thing. Um, so that's changed too, where there used to be just a couple of sources for news. Yeah. And now it's, yeah, now there's so many sources and you never know. I mean, with all the death hoaxes, yeah, it's like nobody really wants to take that leap until they see that it's confirmed by every major news outlet. Right. Or you find out that somebody, somebody's died and then you realize, well, they actually died in <laughs> 15 <years> ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, it's so sad that he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, so it's different. In that I've way. been, I've been snagged by that one just a couple of times, but now when I see that I go and I Google it and I look and I see if 
CNN or MSNBC or somebody is also sharing right. that, right? Then I'll go along because I got I don't remember which who it was, but I got nailed by that, and they're like, I'm like oh, gone so soon, yeah, ten years ago, yeah. But I, I'm kind of proud. I, I figured out. I believe I played the most Christmas music on the air in Rochester than anybody in history. I believe that. Because I was there 30 years. Yeah. And probably for the past 12 years or so, Warren would start their Christmas music the Friday before Thanksgiving and would just play solid Christmas music and would not let up until December 26th at the earliest, sometimes as late as January 1st. Mm -hmm. So if you add all that up, I think I, you know, I hold that record. I really used to love listening to Christmas music. I really did. Uh, and that changed. Only because, and, and this kind of goes along with, with what we're talking about with programming and, and what other songs you can play, is that I know that there's way more Christmas music yeah. that's out there than what I was yeah. hearing. <laughs> yeah. And it's frustrating. Yeah, and that's where you where it goes back to what you were talking about with with uh, the way people figure out. I, I remember, I can't remember what word you use, but it's like metrics. You know, it's like the stats on what this song get, how many plays this song gets, how many spins this song is supposed to get, right, and, and all that kind of stuff. It's popular with this, and it and, and I know that the you, the science is the science, but it's just annoying. Well, I think the science, the better, the best way to explain it, somebody explained it to me because myself and Tony Infantino and Pat Rivers and everybody, we would want to have more in our library. Hey, if we're going to be playing this for literally over a month, right? let's bring some stuff back that we had played before. Let's play contemporary versions of, but the formula apparently is based on if you listen to Warm 101.3 for 20 minutes, doing all your busy work around the holidays, you want to hear three or four of your favorite songs, period. Right. So that's why it's repeated. That's why the, the playlists are a little tighter than they might be in other formats, um, which kind of makes sense, but still. Yeah, but I mean, if you have it on at the office, then you hear Stephen eating 90 times in oh, one yeah. day. <laughs> or at the same time about every day, right. you know? Um, yeah, that. but... I don't know. I how do you think how do you think a radio station would do if they just like imagine having a, a request show where you actually played all of the requests that that came in. Like, when was the last time that anyone really did that? Like a real authentic request show, like in college. You know, um, hey, can you play this? Oh, let me see if I got it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it would if it would be an exclusive thing because I mean sometimes there'd probably be more requests than you had time to play, and other times well, yeah. it could be a little thin. That's true. Um, <laughs> We're just going to put this on repeat until you call in and give me something. But yeah. but and I've heard arguments both ways. You know, if you talk to a, a seasoned program director, they will they have this really great way, this talent of being able to talk you out of how. Like I would think, oh, this would be great. Let's do a let's do a progressive rock show, you know, like nine o'clock at night on a Tuesday. Who cares, you know? Well, we don't want to take the chance. Yeah, like, that's the part that it was like, really, like, what what harm could it do? Right, right. And you might actually get more people going. Hey, this is cool. Yeah, but they have a way of being able to explain it away. Like, well, this and that, and you have to understand in that and this. And then you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, one time I had a right. boss, speaking of my son, my son did the weather um, on my radio show once a week from when he was five, I think, until he was 17 or 18 Oh, years that's old. awesome. He did the weather. So I, I kind of kept track of it, and it was 38 weeks of doing it before my boss at the time ever said anything. <laughs> I did the little stick figure. I kept track of it and it got up to 38 weeks and my boss, we were just talking about certain things and he prefaced everything by saying, um, you know, research shows that people don't like to hear DJs kids on the radio. And I said to him, what do, what do I say to that? 
you know? Right. Do I go up against what you're saying? Or show me the, show me the numbers? Right. It just doesn't right. make a lot Who of... Who did the research? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But then he suggested, I used to do it on Wednesday, so he suggested moving it to Friday, which was a good suggestion. Get it ready for the weekend. Let's talk about the weekend stuff. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that's into what you were saying. There's bosses that have a certain way of trying to convince you that maybe what makes sense doesn't really make sense <laughs> because of research and numbers. And There's also the bosses that say, don't put your kid on the air. It sounds stupid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Have you had to... How many how many bosses have you had over over your career? No, name it. Name them all. No, I can't how, name them all. I mean, you probably could. I, I probably could. It would take a little. But have you had a lot of? I mean, I would. Uh, this seems like a lot of program directors have gone through. Yeah, probably all in all, I would say fifteen, maybe yeah, something that's, like that's, that. That's a fair amount. About that's, fifteen. That's a hell of a lot more than most people have. In yeah. Bosses. So, uh, how that's got to be a real challenge. That probably made you in one way or another a better broadcaster a better a better dj a better personality because you had to constantly kind of learn to now deal with a new person a new personality learn a new way of of communicating to that person but yet still do the same things that you do yeah yeah you know so it kind of makes you a little bit i don't know i think to um to a lot of people's dismay I never really thought of it as much as a career as it was a job. It was a, it was a fun job that ended up turn, turning into my career because I know a lot of people in the business, a lot of people here in Rochester who, um, they know DJs and radio stations and formats in tons of cities all over the United States. Right. When I would go on vacation to Disney or anywhere, um, did you listen, did you listen to radio in Orlando? It's like no, I was I was on vacation. <laughs> was yeah, fun. I was trying to get away from that for <laughs> for about a week, and it was never my. I never wanted to listen to you know the the stud morning show somewhere just to hear how they interacted right. and how they were because I I think it would spoil my delivery and my personality and my on air stuff. Um, so yeah, I, it was more like it was like I said, it was more a job to me than it was. It was a, it was a career when you were finished. Right, yes. Then I was like, oh, yeah, that was a career. Yeah. That but at was the time, career. it was a job. Yeah, yeah. So, But, you know, also you had fun while you were doing it. So was it a job? Yeah, I guess it was. You were getting paid. You were doing something. You had, yeah. To, you had to show up. Yeah, yeah. But and there was, could be worse jobs. Yeah, it was It was fun. That's, and I mean, thinking of stupid things to say on the radio, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, um, I don't think you and I ever really did anything on air together. Maybe once or twice when I did traffic. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. You did traffic for a little while. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't anything extensive, I don't think. No. And I was also um, way too green at that point. I really hadn't come out of my shell yet Yeah. as as a personality. I was still kind of like feeling my way around and not really sure what what I could do or what I couldn't do. Now it would be like I'd say it and then it was more like ask for forgiveness rather than permission whereas there right, i'd be right. really afraid to you know should i say that should i not say that and knowing the traffic gig that you used to have too you were also <laughs> concerned with getting over to this this station by this time right, and then right. checking the traffic and then getting over to the other station right um but yeah no regrets no regrets on the job slash career i i wonder how many people like you were talking about how the they're asking you, you know, oh, do you listen to the radio or you're down on, on vacation? You know, do you ever think about, like, is there doctors that when they're on vacation, they stop in a local <laughs> hospital and see how the surgeons, <laughs> how they're doing those sutures? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, it was, he does it. Just, I wanted to get away, you know, get away from it. Do you while. listen to radio now? Uh, a little bit here and then. I, you know, mostly listen to podcasts if I listen to stuff or music. Yeah. Uh, listen to Scott Fitzgerald's podcast every once in a while. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It, it's, I enjoy him. I enjoy him. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you a story. You mentioned Dave Kane. Yeah. I think one of the funniest stories, and I told this the first time he was going to be let go. I can't even remember how long ago that was. So but, 
in context, you you worked with this was when Warm was was under the same roof, right? As CMF, right? On Winton Road, it was us CMF. I think it was PXY eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, but we had uh, studios on the second floor of out Winton Road near Jefferson. And you know how radio stations are. You'd get deliveries of a certain product for a while. You'd get, I mean, I remember a couple of years ago where I worked, they got a bunch of Bix, Bix Flex yeah, razors. Yes, yes. And they just I still had, have a couple. <laughs> they're great. They're fantastic. <laughs> right. But they used to have razors at all the promotions. And right. the sales guy would give you five. Here you go. Take them. If you wanted more, he'd give you more. Right. So this one day, there was a delivery of some hot dogs like a big bulk delivery of hot dogs in the kitchen of the radio station. Must have been just pa in the packages of hot dogs, packages of hot dogs. And I don't know who thought of this at first, but Dave Kane and I got into this game where we took one hot dog. Oh, Did I tell I, you this joke? I, no, no, but I go ahead. I, I, I heard of this <laughs> and it was, uh, for lack of a better uh, explanation, it was it was called hide the wiener. Yes. yes. <laughs> and the rule was the main rule was the end of the hot dog had to be visible <laughs> when I would take it into Dave's office and hide it. But the end of it had to be visible. If you were going to hide it behind a plant, the very end of it had to be visible behind the plant. If you're going to hide it in a desk drawer, and so we'd go back and forth. If I found it. I'd go, go hide it in Dave's office. Is this the same hot dog? The same hot dog. Oh, God. Well, they don't really go bad, I guess. And the game ended. <laughs> the game ended uh, when I, in hiding the hot dog, I hid it in a long cardboard tube in Dave's office. And come to find out after the fact that inside this <laughs> cardboard tube was a signed autographed Van Halen poster, or or it was Aerosmith or something. <laughs> so this rank old hot dog that had been through, you know, yeah, this game for two or three weeks was now leaking its you know hot dog juices juices. Oh man, onto uh, that was the end of the hide the hot dog game. That was the end of the hide, but it, <laughs> but it was a heck of a game while it lasted. It I a, did hear that, and I don't think I heard it from either you or Dave Kane. As okay. a matter of fact, I heard it from somebody else because we we thought we had made up this game, you know. And the the key again, it had to be visible. You had to see it, no matter where it was. It couldn't just be hiding somewhere in the dark. Do you have a period of time, and maybe it was that period of time where? the job was the most enjoyable in your career because of whether it's the hours you were working, who was on staff, what was going on in the world, anything like that. Is there a period of time that really was the best out of your career that you could look back on? It might have been at about that time um, when we were all on Winton Road. I mean, Wheeze was there. I forget. I think I was doing maybe middays at the time. Um so Weez was there with his his circus of people that would come in, mm -hmm. and uh, you know a lot of good people worked for CMF. We had a pretty good staff at Warm, and then I think we acquired PXY or something like that. So, yeah, I mean for the most part, for the most part, it was fun, and that ended up being the reason why I decided that enough was enough. It just it, it wasn't, wasn't fun. Anymore. Wasn't that fun anymore? And I kind of saw the horizon and <clears throat> saw what radio was doing, and. Uh, um, I did not want to be asked to do radio shows in two or three other markets, uh, which is obviously being done now. Yeah. You know, you're not the first person that's told me that in this room. Yeah. It just wasn't fun anymore. Directly from the mouth of Dave Kane. Yeah. It, and that's, that's, and you could see that. You yeah. could see that with, with a lot of people. And I, I, I was having fun, but see, here's the thing with, with my experience at radio it the way I look at it, you guys, you guys got to, got to do radio when radio was much better. You, the job itself, the whole, everything, the package was, that's what I wanted to end up in. Right. But I was too late. I was 20 years too late. You know what I mean? 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago when you, when you've, like we're just getting started was when radio was really at its height, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
from the 70s to the 90s was really like the climax of radio. And I and I missed out on that. But you guys got to do it here and and that's what I'm that's why I'm doing this podcast because I want to hear the stories. Right. Of right. of what you guys did. Yeah. And I think it still could be. It's just I mean trying to think of things from an economic standpoint, I could see corporate and management deciding, hey, this is a great way to save some money. Maybe not a great way, but a way to save money. Yeah. And you have uh, one DJ who pre records radio shows for five different towns. Right. Yeah. And then you don't have to have those other four jobs anymore. Um, but it just, it just isn't the same. It's not as local. Well, no. that's the thing. It's, I, and ha- it's such a it's such a ridiculous kind of thing because you have to make the argument it's a business. It's not a charity. It's not a service. Right. Right. You know, so I know there's a lot of people probably that are in management and that don't want to do what they have to do, but if they want to keep their job, they got to do what they have to yeah. do. You know. Yeah. So yeah. cutting those jobs, um, centralizing the consolidating the broadcasting, like all of the production now is it's very common that all the production's coming out of one central area rather than having individual production directors at the local stations and, and things like that. Um, that's the part that people really love doing. People in radio love to do those things. Yeah. I, you know, they love to, to cut commercials and voice commercials or, you know, come up with cool bits or, or do these fun things. That's what they love doing. And now those aspects are gone yeah, or quickly leaving. And Dave and I had the benefit of uh, retirement, imminent retirement, you know, as yeah. now's the time to go. And I think with you, it was, you wanted to get into what you're doing now a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. It's almost like I want to make. It's, it's so podcasting in a lot of ways is kind of like what radio was a long time ago, just in the, in the spirit of it, you know, it's not at all the same as a business model and, and technology wise, it's, it's quite different, but the feeling of it, the, the emotions that go into it, you want to get on, you want to, people want to do a podcast most of the time because it's fun. Yeah. They sit around and they talk, you know, not a, <laughs> podcasts are like babies right everybody can make one but should they um right but but it's the spirit it's almost like the spirit of radio in podcasting yeah and people have said after i've retired now they said well maybe you should start a podcast right and and my response is well i don't know what i would specialize in i don't have a specialty right i'm not an expert on anything which i think made me you know a a decent broadcaster is that if the Red Wings were hot, I could talk about the Red Wings. If a big act was coming to town, I could talk about them. Yeah. You know, I, I was interested in just about everything. So I right. think so I you could, had a lot to talk about, but right. you didn't have to talk a lot. Yeah. So that worked out perfectly. And I didn't have to talk about a specific subject. Right. You know, like some of these do. You should do a bowling podcast. Bowling? <laughs> Just, just randomly picking up a subject. What kind of bowling, Scott? Uh, bowling for dollars. <laughs> Turkey bowling. Turkey bowling. So, what have you been up to in your retirement? What's what what passes your time? Um, little golf here and there. Uh, trips with the fam. Not not a whole lot. I mean, I do want to just set up a mic in my home and be able to do some some voice work if yeah. if it's out there. Um and talking to you and other folks in the business that were in radio at one point, it's not like there's money coming in hand over fist for that. So, um, I didn't want to do something at home that I just retired from doing, you know, from 40 years, start your own uh, internet radio station. (laughs) I've been approached about doing a little bit of that. Um, I might still, I don't know. I don't know. I like internet radio. Yeah. It's, it's, it's changed since I was messing around with it about 10 years, 10, 12 years ago. Right. Right. Um, but, but now there's a lot of ways where you can actually play songs and, and create a, an actual kind of music radio station. Whereas for a while you couldn't do that. It was really difficult. And apparently during the pandemic streaming was just went through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, people little... might not have been traveling to and from their jobs. 
like they once were because of the pandemic and working from home. But while they were working from home, they would stream radio stations or yeah. stream whatever. Um, and that again is like radio. It's, it's exactly like radio. If it's a station streaming their own, you know, signal and everything. Yeah. Um, what would you do if, if, uh, <laughs> I think I know the answer anyway. If, if you were, if you had a radio station, someone gave you a radio station and you can't say I would sell it and make money. Uh, well, I guess you could, but what would you do with a radio station right now? What kind of radio station would you make? Huh, that's a that's a really good question because I never I never really delved into a lot of the programming aspect of things. Right. Um, other than play the Christmas music and not play Ghostbusters that one Halloween. <laughs> um, but I never really got into the programming thing or reading too much about the research. Right. You don't know what's hot. What's uh, right. you know and why right. things are being done. Why they're not being done. Type yeah. Of a thing. Um, I just hope there's radio in the future. Um, even a little bit like there used to be radio when it was basically the only thing besides black and white television that right. would be in people's homes. Back in the good old days back when you didn't day, have yeah. much to choose from. Back, back in the days <laughs> when announcers used to stick their finger in their ear like that and talk. Um, so I just, I, like I said, it, it encourages me that some, some younger kids who may have interned at the station or have been hired at the station still seem to have a passion for radio. I, I think it's, it's, it's good to see because it's still out there. It still can be, um, pretty riveting. Mm -hmm. It can still be, um, you know, really important. Uh, it's just that the, I think the homogenization with corporations now and the way they're doing things to cut costs, yeah. um, is a little disheartening to us old radio guys, but hopefully it'll still, it'll still shine. I'm interested to see how it will be. I, I really am. And, and for me, <laughs> I know that if I had a radio station, it probably wouldn't make much money. Right. But maybe it would. Who knows? Maybe it'll get, they'll, it'll get to a point where all of the radio stations are doing the same thing for so much that if you, if you came out with a radio station that was really kind of old school, very local, live and local with personalities and, you know, Maybe it would do great. Yeah. Maybe people would be like, wow, this is awesome. You know, it would just, it would like hit that nostalgic chord. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but an interesting thing too is I think, and if you think about it, you know, radio, I think 1920, if memory serves me well, was when radio first started. Yeah. And then when TV hit, there were people who said there's going to be no need for radio anymore. Right. And radio was still around. Then you advance 10 or 20, 30 years. And people are able to carry music with them now on their body. Sony Walkman, now MP3s and, yeah. and iPhones. And people said there wasn't a need for radio anymore. But it's still still around. So all these things that were supposed to bring radio down, uh, satellite radio as well. That's not going to be need for you know over-the-air radio anymore. But it's still there. So hopefully it'll you know keep above water and be something that people will still be interested to, to check out and listen to. And, and then they're not, I guess some of the car manufacturers aren't putting them in cars anymore. They're putting not putting radios, radios in cars? Radios in cars They're anymore? just putting uh, Bluetooth um, connections? Yeah, yeah. So that, that blows my mind. I can't even imagine a car without a radio. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'll be interested, too, to see what, uh, Man. what happens down the road. Yeah. Well, I know this for certain is that well I don't know this for certain but I really believe it'll never be as good as it used to be because it it's unlikely that it'll have personalities like you like Kano and like all of the other people that have graced the airwaves here in Rochester for so long I just don't I think it's a I think it's that breed is going away that talent I don't know. It's it's or maybe I should say it's evolving into something else, right? So the people that kids growing up now that maybe if they were born thirty years ago would have been great radio people, now they're YouTube stars or something like that. Right, right. So it's changing it's changing the medium. But it's but they won't be on radio, so you won't hear you won't hear that that jock that you love, that morning show that you love anymore. It's just gonna be different. Right, right. Uh, for us old old dogs. Yeah. It makes me feel old and I'm not old. 
But I mean, just the technology of it, the fact that it's still there, that you can buy something very inexpensive and put on the counter in your kitchen or just f- turn a button on when you're in your car and you can listen to music. And you can, you listen, can listen to, to personality. For you listen, free. You can listen to talk radio. You can listen yeah. to all sorts of stuff. So that's my hope, that it still rises above and cuts through and is, uh, you know, people count on it down the road. Um, we'll just have to see. Any advice for uh, for those youths, the youths that are going get, to get into radio? Um, I, I'm just glad that they sh- still show interest. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it would be really hard for me to break in, knowing what I've, you know, known for the last 45 years in the business. Um, but, like I said, I'm encouraged by the fact that there does seem to be kids graduating high school going into college for it still yeah i mean that the the broadcasting department over at brockport is still going pretty strong from what i understand yeah so that is that is good news yeah yeah thanks so much for coming and hanging out gilly well thanks for having me fitzy appreciate appreciate that yeah man and uh say hi to the fam and you too i will next time on the rock radio podcast who knows (laughs) somebody else in radio